Okay, let's continue. So where we left off last time is that we're able to do a box selection and get visual feedback about the exact tiles that you select. For instance, when you are building uh, floors, floors and walls. And so today I want to do uh, panning and zooming of the map. And we'll start with panning. We want to use the right mouse button to pan around the scene. And we can implement it using an NS Pen gesture recognizer. And we'll use the view controller to recognize the panning actions, but it will be the game scene that will show us moving the camera. So let's get started. So we'll start up Xcode. Okay, let's see. So let's start in our game scene. And because we're going to pan around, we now need some more inf uh, We need to make sure that uh, we can move our camera. We have our camera node here already. But let's call this our camera rig. And Let's add some variables for pen support. We need a drag position start as a CG uh, optional CG point, and we need a drag position target for CG point. And notice that the autocomplete isn't working, and that is because. There is some work with importing sprite kit for the editor. It works fine with building, but for some reason, importing uh, sprite kit itself doesn't seem to work. I created uh, a bug using Apple's feedback tool for that, but I haven't heard anything back yet. So for now, I guess we'll just have to uh, uh, make do with it. Okay, so we have our drag start position and our drag target position. Let's go to our view controller and let's go down and create so, uh, pen and zoom. We'll start by implementing panning, drag the map around. And to do that, we need to override an objective C. We need to create a function. We call it a pen handler and it will take a gesture, recognize. This will be an NS pen gesture recognizer. And the first thing it will do is it will get the position within the view where the gesture event happens. Let's see, let B be gesture recognize location in our SK view. Then we convert the position within the view to the uh, position within the scene. We have a scene point and this will be the SK view. We convert point three uh, P to our scene. And then we need to look at in what state the gesture recognizer is. So we take a gesture recognized state. And in case we start panning, then we set scene drag st position start to the scene point. In case it changed, set scene drag position target to scene uh, to the scene point. And finally if it ended, then we set it, uh, set the start position to nil. And because other states are possible, but they shouldn't happy, we'll just log a warning. And now, right. 
change to recognize date or value. So we'll get an integer indicating the state that uh, we found. Now to, to use this uh, pen handler, we go up to our view that load function and we, uh, we add some gesture recognizers here. More might come in later, so let's create the pen gesture recognizer. This will be an NS pen gesture recognizer targeting ourselves. Oh. And the action will be selector. And this needs an Objective-C method, so we can use the one we just created. This will be our pen handler. Now it's that we are not calling the function using uh, the brackets after it, we're passing in the actual function, and that's why we only need the function name. Then we take our pen gesture recognizer and we set the button mask to uh, a, a, a value of two. This means only recognize the right mouse button. And then we add this uh, gesture recognizer to the view. So this uh, should now be able to recognize uh, pen gestures. Uh, it calls the pen handler and that sets some data in the game scene. The game scene isn't doing anything with it just yet. So let's go back to the game scene for a bit. And let's go into our update function. That's here. And let's first move the camera to the correct position. So let's see if we have a, a, a star track and we have a track target. So we need to unwrap these optionals. Then our movement will be the drag start minus the drag target. So the difference between those two. And then we take our camera node of position and we take the camera node of position and add the movement. And I think this should be enough to implement dragging the scene around. So let's uh, let's build and see what happens. Okay, so we have a scene and indeed I'm pressing the right mouse button and I can drag around now. I'm pressing the left mouse button that doesn't work, but it can still select. But the right mouse button indeed lets me pan around in the scene. So that's nice. So let's get back. So we met our first goal of panning. Now, the second goal is uh, zooming using the mouse wheel. Um, uh, first, we you implement zooming by setting the camera scale. Uh, and we use the view controller to recognize the mouse wheel action because I want to use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then the game scene sets the correct zoom level. And finally, we'll look at uh, using point filtering instead of linear filtering. That is something you can do if that is your preference, but it's up to you to choose. It's uh, basically the way uh, sprite scaling works when you zoom in. So let's get back. And let's go into our game scene. So we had our camera. Here, what we also need to take uh, start taking tracking is the camera scale, and this will be a CG float. I will give it a value of one by default, so that's no zoom at all. And then we go into our we have a did move to view function we will set the camera node set scale to the camera scale so it starts out at the one you uh, specified earlier 
and then we go to our update function and right after where we move the camera we can now set the correct zoom value so we set the zoom level this is taking the camera note and setting the scale to camera scale finally we need a function to set that value so we'll create a function called set zoom we'll take in a delta that's all zoom delta that is of type cg float and our new zoom will be the camera node dot x scale plus the zoom delta and if the new zoom is smaller than uh, minimum version so basically we want to uh, limit the the zoom levels let's quickly create a couple of let's quickly create a couple of constants to determine the minimum zoom level we see g float and we'll set it to 0 0.5 that's basically zoom and, and zoom level of two meaning everything is twice as large and the last one will be eight these are just values i played around with a bit i found these were working quite well you can choose other ones if you other ones if you want so let's see if the new zoom is smaller than the minimum zoom and we'll set the new zoom to be equal to the minimum zoom so we're clamping the value else if the new zoom is larger than the max zoom then we'll do something similar we'll set the new zoom equal to self dot max zoom and finally we do camera scale equals the new zoom now we need to use this in the view controller so let's go back to our view controller and we here have dragging the map around let's look at uh, zooming in and out or recognizing changes in the mouse wheel note this is mac os only and it does not use a gesture recognizer but it's nice and simple and it assumes the view controller this first responder, so it's, act, uh, it's the active window. Let's see, so we have an override function and we take the scroll wheel. We, have an ev uh, we get an event in and then we do scene, but that zoom and the delta will be the event scrolling delta dot y times. 0.1 this is also a value just play around with a bit this one works quite well if this is a higher value then the mouse wheel reacts more sensitively if it's uh, lower then uh, zooming is slower i found this one to work quite okay so you can experiment if you want with other values so let's try and run this and see if we can now use the mouse button to zoom in so we can zoom out quite a bit then zoom in uh, to twice the size and this is where you start noticing because uh, the sprites use linear filtering by default um, so it might be a bit difficult to see but you might find the uh, graphics now becoming a bit blurry and you might prefer to have uh, point filtering meaning that go back to the that you keep seeing the individual pixels uh, pixels a bit better so it's more pixel art like it's a matter of personal preference um, but just to show you i'll show you how to set it up so for in, we need to go to our tile sprite managers and where we uh, create our textures here we get our textures and store them we'll take the texture and we set the filtering mode to 
nearest linear is the default value. So let's, let's save it. Let's do it in the Entity Sprite Manager as well. And the Item Sprite Manager. Okay, let's see what difference this makes. So when I zoom in now, we see we keep seeing these uh, a bit harder edges and it all looks a bit more crisp. So for me personally, that, that's preferable, but it's uh, up to your own choice. So we have panning and zooming uh, now working. That's nice. Also, um, we've had, this is the 12th episode so far. And so far we spent three episodes working on the model. So basically our actual gameplay or our game simulation. And we spent nine uh, episodes working on visuals, UI stuff and so on. So I think it's time to get back to uh, improving our model and making it a bit more interesting game. So next time we will start adding objects that workers can install and we can go from there with lots of other uh, interesting stuff. So thanks for watching and have a good day.